everybody! Welcome back to this part two of the Slave Women Lecture. Boy, if you thought the first half was depressing, wait for the second half. It gets even worse. Oh, boo! Next slide. Stop! Uh, you're gonna you're gonna stop this. Let me give you some instructions, and you're gonna stop this, and you're gonna go look at a YouTube video. Oh, yay! It'll be short. Don't worry. So, uh, you're going to stop this video. This isn't a video. This is a PowerPoint. And you're going to go search YouTube for Ain't I a Woman, which is a Sojourner's Truth speech uh, she gave about uh, women's rights and being a slave woman. Um, I, I loathe to, I have a few that I like. I like this. I like Cicely Tyson, who's an old school actress, uh, doing the speech before Congress in costume. Uh, there's a Kerry Washington one I also like. There's a Maya Angelou one that's cool. My theory is you just search Ain't I a Woman and go look at one or two that you think is cool. Watch those uh, and then, you know, come back here. All right? Okay. So you go do that. I'm going to go to the next slide. Well, that was cool, wasn't it? What I like about that YouTube video, um, uh, Ain't I a Woman, uh, is, 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 what Sojourner Truth has there in her statement is a notion that that she recognizes there's all this ideology for women out there, this true womanhood stuff, but that it doesn't apply to her because she is a slave woman. And that what's happening in the 1850s is, is a bunch of people who don't want women to have basic civil rights are using this true womanhood stuff to say women are too special, too delicate, to have rights. And she's saying, that's nonsense because I'm a slave and no one treats me that way. So that's cool. Anyway, we're going to now talk about some um, ideology that is quite uh, quite racist. Um, that is, we're going to talk about ideas that allowed some white people, not all white people, but the white people who thought owning people was a good idea, to think that enslaving women of color was a good idea. Because here's the thing. These ideas, they now fall under the category of racism, but these ideas were the ideas that justified slavery. You ha people had slaves because it's an economic institution that made money, and then they develop racist ideas that make this shitty thing they're doing, they think, okay. So racism doesn't cause slavery. Slavery gives birth to racism. Yeah? You get that? If you don't yet, you will. Don't worry. Next slide. Hey, just a warning. Um, I'm about to talk about some fairly racist stuff. No, excessively racist stuff. And indeed, I have a slide for that. But I just want to say it now. Um, I'm conscious of the fact that I am an older white woman talking about some really racist stuff. And that in a post-Trump America, we live in a world where many, not all, but many older white people not only have really racist ideas, but live in a world where the current immensely racist president has given them permission to say these things out loud. So as I lecture about these really racist ideas about black women, racist and sexist ideas about black women, I need us to keep in mind that these are ideas people had about these women. They are not real. I'm not describing how how these women really were or how I think they were. I'm talking about ideology, not unlike uh, these true womanhood ideas. Remember the lecture last week? We talked about how there are these ideas about how women were supposed to be, and then the, how there's how they really are. Right? Okay. So if we first review the true, womanhood the true womanhood ideas about what a real woman were, and you don't have to write these down if you don't want to because you have a whole lecture on this from last week, but that real women, good women, nice women were submissive and passive. They were pious, which is religious and moral. They were domestic, so they were inclined to, indeed, fulfilled by housework and child rearing, and that, and that women were pure, sexually pure, repulsed by sex because because women were good, pious, pure, submissive, etc., etc. Okay. Now, the reason we had the white women lecture first is not because 
Peg thinks white women are more important, but because we needed to understand these ideas of true womanhood, submissive, pious, domestic, and pure, so that we could understand the racist ideas that people will hold about slave women, and then the ways in which those ideas about slave women are transformed or stuck onto all, all, all women of color. That is, what one of the things that's important about slavery in America is we develop these really ugly ideas uh, about, about people of African descent to justify slavery. And then when slavery is over, America takes these really ugly ideas and they apply them to lots of non-white groups. And we'll talk about that as we go. And that's one of the reasons this is important. It's not the only reason, but it's one of them. Next slide. Racist territory, a warning. So uh, two things. Again, I'm not embracing any of these ideas. I'm not talking about them because I secretly believe them. Um, I'm also not describing how black women really were. I'm talking about ugly ideas about black women that were bullshit, that were used to justify the buying and selling of black female bodies. And worse, the sexual assault and rape on black female bodies. Okay? I'm also going to keep the pictures to a minimum for this because there's like, there's no good pictures for this. All right? Good. Not good, but you know. Next slide. First ideology, there's really two we're going to talk about, two sets of racist ideas that d justify female slavery. And the first and the oldest ideology is, is we, we take this group of ideas and we call them the Jezebel ideology. So Jezebel is, is the first racist stereotype of black women. And it says that essentially uh, black women were the opposite of true women, white women. That is, if white women were supposed to be submissive, uh, black women, Jezebel, she was aggressive and dominant. And the idea here was that um, slavery, you could justify slavery because black women were inappropriately aggressive and dominant, and so you enslaved them uh, to control them. Uh, also that black women, and uh, slave women, were immoral. That is, they didn't know about right and wrong. They were not naturally pious or religious or moral. And so it was okay to enslave them because these people just didn't understand basic human morality. Now, again, not talking about reality, talking about icky ideas. So uh, um, slave women were fundamentally immoral, like animals. Uh, and, and then slave women were not domestic. That is, they were slovenly, dirty, bad housekeepers, bad mothers. And again, this is why it was okay uh, to enslave them because they weren't real women. And if you're thinking, well, that doesn't make any sense if slave owners took some of these women and used them as maids and nannies and, and, and house workers, how could, because there's no logic in racism, sexism, homophobia, any of that shit. None of this is about logic. It's about, it's about anxiety, it's about hate. It's about justifying something you know is wrong. People who enslaved people had to have known it was wrong. So they developed these ideas to make it okay. In the same way that whenever we do something wrong in our society, we develop ideas about why it's okay. It's probably wrong to drive around single drivers in a car that spews uh, uh, toxic fumes into the environment. But we do it because we have all these reasons why. It's probably wrong to go out in, in public and go to the mall, uh, it, but, but you have some, some reason for why you need to do it. I need new socks, right? That is, we do bad stuff all the time, or stuff that we shouldn't do, and then we develop ideologies about why it's okay. I would argue that none of us, I assume that none of us do anything as terrible as slavery. Oh, okay, so notice here we have, Jezebel is, we've got three things here. Uh, if real women are submissive, Jezebel is not. If real women are moral, Jezebel is not. If real women are domestic, Jezebel is not. Ooh, we're missing one. We're missing the sex one. And thank goodness, America, always weird about sex. Next slide. Significantly to Jezebel is this notion that black women were not pure. 
That is, if real women not only didn't have sex, but didn't like sex, a notion that black women were lascivious, which is a fancy word that means thought about, wanted sex all the time, and sexually rapacious. Rapacious is a word that comes from the word raptor, right? Uh, predator, predator. Raptors are predators, and they eat things. That is, to be rapacious is to be a, a, a aggressive consumer, a, a, a attacker, it's a rapacious, bad, lascivious, uh, uh, too sexy, inappropriately sexy. So this notion, again, that while real women uh, could keep their knees together and were repulsed by sex, black women were sexually unbound, rampant, that slave women craved sex. And, and, and you could see where this would be a really significant, a really handy thing to believe if you were a person who wanted to own black women and sexually abuse them because that you can't rape the willing. Um, so there's a notion that, that all sex with black women was okay because no black woman would really say no. And, and, and then you would ask, well, what would masters do with the fact that their slave women did say no, that they did struggle? And you can bet they did because that's what a woman does when she's being raped. Uh, the master would say, oh, she's just playing with me. Oh, she's just enticing me. Oh, she's just uh, uh, adding to my excitement. She knows I like it when she struggles. Or she really wants it. Here's a thing rapists say all the time. She really wanted it. She just didn't know it. Um, so this is sort of this erotic, this erotic is eroticization of the black female body, this notion that that the black female body is fundamentally about sex and sex appeal and that, that the black female body is always available to men, particularly white men. See, that's gross. That's really ugly ideology. And again, I'm not talking about how black women really were. I'm talking about racist ideology that justified slavery. Next slide. Don't I? Anyway, why? Why believe these icky things? Because it justifies slavery. And in, in developing a, a, a set of ideas and ideology that justified slavery, it allows for institutionalized slavery, that is, the, uh, entire cultures can economically benefit from slavery, but it institutionalizes racism to justify that economic benefit. And then you can make slavery go away but you can't make the ideas that underwrote it go away. And they're still out there. So there's this idea that black women are not real women, that they're somehow different from real women, and, and that thus enslaving them is okay. And what'll happen if you're thinking, well, I don't care, I'm not black, I'm listening to this, what do I care? Um, well, you should, one, just basic decency, but let's say not even that. Like I said before, what happens is is the culture will take these ideas and they will apply them to other women. So we have these notions, for example, that Asian women or Hispanic women are also sort of hypersexual and that the, 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 the objectification of, of these groups of women is all right. Uh, that, 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 that racist ideas about women of color are always connected to inappropriate sexuality. Um, and you know this. If you think about it. Indeed, a little while ago, I was trying to find um, some lists of sort of, I was doing an encyclopedia of American women, and I was trying to find some names of Asian women to put in my encyclopedia, because I'm not an Asian American historian. So I was Googling stuff. And when you put in an a Asian American women and you Google it, you get back porn stuff, which is really repulsive. Uh, so again, this notion that slave women uh, were dangerous and animalistic and so that slavery was good for society. And that then you can see that idea will then go forward in the 20th and 21st century as, as women of color are dangerous, and so it's okay that we pay them less and say terrible things about them. Next slide. Most significantly, Jezebel justified white men's predation, you know, their predatoring, of women of color. That is, it made the rape of slave women acceptable. And that's repulsive. And I want to be super clear about this. 
I think all sex between masters, between white men and slave women was rape. And I'm not the only one. The, the, there's sometimes a notion that masters and and slave owners uh, fell in love. Indeed, I heard my colleague, who I, I heard a colleague I respect not long ago, say something like this, and it made me cringe. Here's the problem with that: um, love is a love requires equals. It feels like, and and, and even when but consensual sex, that is the ability to say yes to sex, requires the ability to say no to sex. That is, you can't consent to sex if you can't say no, and you can't say no if you are property owned by the person wanting to have sex with you. I mean, you can say no, but they can still do whatever they want, so it's not really no. Ergo, even if women sometimes collaborated in the sex, slave women did, they did it because they understood it was good for them, because if they didn't, it would go very badly for them. They may have done it to trade for favors. They may have done it because masters were more likely to free the ch their own children by, on slave mistresses than they were children slaves had with other slaves. So they may have done it. We know a number of slaves would consent to sex with master because master might, sl might free their children, uh, which is a mother sacrificing herself for her kids, which is something mothers do. But let's not confuse any of that with love or affection or consent. Men who own women rape them when they have sex with them because the women don't have a choice. Got it? Okay. I wanted to talk just briefly about this pornography of violence thing. That is, when we talk about women of color and, 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 and masters sexual predation, sexual and physical abuse of them, we often, it's often it falls into this category of pornography of violence. And I'm super uncomfortable with that. That is sort of a notion that it's that sort of slow down and look at a car wreck thing that Americans do. Um, well, probably all people do. But that you can't not look away. That is oftentimes in America, the only time we talk about black people in history is when we talk about the violence done to them in slavery. And that there's something unhealthy and worrisome about that. So I don't want to not talk about the violence against slave women, but I also don't want you to think that's the only thing that's important about them. And indeed, that's why the first half of this lecture was about the ways in which these women, all the things these women did, and, 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 and how the difficulty of their life made women who were particularly resilient and resistant that they were more than what was done to them yeah okay next slide so what happens is um, um, white abolitionists come along and they say see that Jezebel stuff um, that's proof that slavery is bad and, and we have here is we have well-intentioned white abolitionists an abolitionist is somebody who thinks slavery should be abolished and these well-intentioned white abolitionists who believe the Jezebel stuff because slave owners have told them black women are, are, are immoral, they um, are, are, are lazy with their housework, they're, um, um, and they're, 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 they're sexual animals. Um, but wh and white abolitionists who live in the North have no reason not to believe that's not true. They've been told it by people sitting in Congress and presidents, white dudes with authority. What they say is, Slave women aren't naturally that way. That slavery is so corrupt. It's such a corrupting, immoral, terrible institution that it has turned women, slave women, into those things. And it has corrupted, they said, white masters. So, again, they argue that the immorality of slavery corrupts everyone it touches. Slave women and white masters. Um, now, we don't buy the, the Jezebel ideology, but white abolitionists did, and then they used having believed that ideology as proof that slavery was bad. So you got kind of a good news, bad thing there. But then slave owners are like, well, hi, well, um, um, okay. They come up with a new ideology. Next slide. The Mammy ideology. And the Mammy ideology is 
is if Jezebel is the anti-true woman, right? She's everything true women, true women are not. Then Mammy is the black true woman. And I have here a picture from the, the, um, the, the epically famous Gone with the Wind, Vivian Leigh, a Scarlett O'Hara there in the foreground. Um, and then, um, 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 oh my God, hold on. What's her name? Um, we had her in the list. It's early. I'm, um, Hattie McDaniel. Hattie McDaniel as uh, Mammy in the background. Hattie McDaniel was on our list of women early in the semester. And we get that list, remember that night? Um, and she's the first uh, black person in America to win an Oscar and for her portrayal of Mammy. And and you should, if you haven't seen Gone with the Wind, you should see it. And not because um, it's a it's a documentary on slavery. It's it's astoundingly racist. Um, but it's also really a, a, a primer on on these ideas about black womanhood and white womanhood. And in that sense, I think it's 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 a helpful movie to have in your cultural knowledge wheelhouse. Yeah. Okay. So who's Mammy? Next slide. Right. If real women are moral, Mammy was moral. Indeed, in 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 in, in both the book Gum of the Wind and in the movie, uh, Hattie McDaniel's character, who's literally called Mammy, she's the moral gatekeeper for her white family, and 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 particularly the Mammy in the movie and the book, the moral gatekeeper for Scarlett O'Hara. But it's a notion that somehow Mammy, as the um like the black housekeeper for the white family. Uh, she's the one who knows right and wrong the best. She knows, for example, that Scarlett should eat her breakfast before she goes off to the picnic at the Tarletons because um, nice girls don't eat in front of people. So you eat at home where nobody can see you, and then you go off to the picnic and you're like, no, I'm too delicate. I'll just have salad, right? Mammy is domestic. Indeed, she's the ultimate domestic. She's a full-time maid and housekeeper. She lives to serve her family. She has no life outside of taking care of the white people in her family. Indeed, her family is the white people. Mammy is submissive. That is, she might be mouthy, like, you know, Scarlett, you better eat those pancakes, but fundamentally she knows her place, and she understands that she's inferior to her white family, and she's happy to serve them because they are superior to her. So she's not only submissive, but like that true woman stuff, She's like happy about her submissiveness. And, and, and then lastly, that Mammy is asexual. And, and really the Mammies are, I'm not saying black women were, because that's ridiculous too. But, but, but this, the, the stereotype is that Mammy, Mammy has no sexual needs. She has no need to be married and no need to have sex, no need for a sex life. And indeed, in Gone with the Wind, the book and the movie, Mammy has no life outside of her white family. She certainly doesn't have a husband or a boyfriend or any fun time, sexy time uh, with, with the dude next door. She's asexual. So she is the black true woman. She is moral. She is domestic. She is submissive. She doesn't care about sex. This one's harder for abolitionists to counter. This is slave owners work up this ideology. It justifies slavery. Because look, she's happy to do all this stuff. This is the happy slave myth. You know, she's inferior, she recognizes it, and she's happy to serve her betters. Um, and it says slavery's okay because Mammy enjoys her oppression. So, next slide. This is why Mammy's always portrayed as fat. And again, I'm I, I'm not being a, a fattist. I am myself a little bit fat and perfectly comfortable with that. But in our culture, we imagine that sexual women, sexy women are slim and that fat women are asexual. So we portray a fat women as, as, as asexual, as mothering types. And, and the pictures here, this is that one, the picture on the left is a mammy cookie jar which is weird um and and the picture on the the bottom there is a is a fruit label um and a notion of sort of happy submissive uh black women but not sexy so the opposite of jezebel also notice the exaggerated features particularly uh, the lips there 
So there's a little bit of sort of sexual tension there in that fruit label with Mammy's bright red lips. And I don't know, exaggerated, not quite human features. Do you know what I'm saying? I'm not saying more. I'm super uncomfortable. Run away! Next slide. So uh, the reality is that these Mammy and Jezebel uh, images persist to this day. That is, you still see, uh, these are some not entirely older ones, but you still see Mammy images. It used to be there's a syrup that was Mammy shaped. Um, you still see this sort of happy, kerchiefed, fundamentally neutered black women characters. Um, you see them in advertising, but also you can see them in TV and in movies. And then you also see there's sort of the hypersexual, super hot black woman images. And, and that cartoon there, which just makes my skin crawl. But again, sort of drawing a line between sort of old notions of this, that, that cartoon there, old notions of this animalistic, uh, uh, see that, it doesn't even look like a person. It looks like kind of a monkey slash alien there and a notion that that's that black women aren't even people um that they're animals that they're alien that they're other and that they're all about sex and then this picture they are the other one which is it, it's a variation on the same damn thing it really is and i'm not saying there's anything wrong with being black or wearing a bikini or having big boobs or or licking lollipops but that you take that picture you put all those elements together and it says a certain kind of thing about women of color, not just black women, women of color in general. That is not humanizing and not cool. So, yeah, bummer. That's the end of this lecture. And my takeaway from this is if, remember every lecture, why did we do this, Peg? Why do I have to know about this? My point is that these ideas from the past, born uh, in the early 1800s to justify slavery, still exist today. They still have power in our world today. And it's also a way of helping us understand what racism and sexism is really about. That repugnant ideas about people of color, repugnant ideas about women, and repugnant ideas about women of color exist not just because some people like being assholes or haters. They exist because there's an economic gain to be had in patriarchy and white supremacy. There's an economic gain to be made for the people who benefit from patriarchy and white supremacy. And when you other, when you turn women and people of color into subhumans who don't count, then it's okay that they don't have the same rights, that they don't have the same wages, they don't have the same opportunities, and that makes it okay then for white men of elite classes to have 99% of the wealth in America. It's super handy if you're in the ruling class to believe these ideas. They matter because they affect every person listening to this lecture, including the white dudes. These ideas aren't accidental. These ideas, these ideas, racist and sexist ideas, are always motivated in the end by power and economic supremacy. And that's worth knowing. Yeah? Okay, well, I told you this was going to be depressing. It was, wasn't it? I think we're all better for having heard it because these are powerful, important ideas, but they're not very much fun. Can we go back to talking about condoms? No. Bad student. No, bad peg. I can't blame you. Anyway, that's it for part two of the slavery lecture. You're going to email me your notes for both part one and part two. You're also going to email me your reading response, and um, you're going to keep on taking care of yourself. And know that I miss you and wish I was in class with you. Bye. Bye-bye.